All right, guys, happy Socktober. We're going to do a toe-up sock, but not in the traditional sense where you use the weight in the middle. So you would crank your toe, hang a weight, hang your stitches, have a toe in there, and then you put your weight. We're going to do it a little bit unconventionally. So my friend Andy the Nitrous has told me about this. I've not tried it, so we're doing this on the fly. I want to stop on this side because when we start going in the round again, I want to be going in the right direction. So... What I already did is I put waist yarn, ripcord waist yarn, because I want to take this out, but I need to have these stitches that I put on with this waist yarn to stay live stitches so I can kitchener the toe closed from the bottom up. So, last needle before my half mark, and we stop with the waist yarn. We're going to pull that tail in, and we're going to start making a toe right off the bat. So essentially, we're going to have... All these 32 stitches, this is a 64, we're going to decrease, we're going to increase, and then we're going to have um, the stitches going in the round again. So those stitches down here, these first rows, are going to get kitchenered to the first row when we start cranking the tube of the foot. I hope that makes sense, okay? Let's get some yarn in here and try it out. Oh, if we fail, I have tried way too many videos today that didn't go the way I wanted them to. So we're going to thread our yarn. We got to leave a long tail because we're kitchenering the toe shut. Even though it's a toe up, we're going to kitchener it shut. Okay. So we need to put this onto the first needle that's going to knit, making sure we definitely have a long toe. I want to make sure the toe or the tail is really long. I'm not going to put my heel spring on yet. But we're going to crank around to the to the front, to 6 o'clock, because we want to put all these needles up in work, okay? So hold your tails, crank around to the front. We're going to put all these needles up. These needles will now be out of work, and we're going to make a toe. Ready? This one is always weird when I go around this first pass, but we'll make it work. So after that row, we're putting our heel spring on. And we're going to start our decreases right away. So one needle up on the side the yarn is coming from. I'm going to hold this tail to ensure it knits. There we go. And it knit. So we're going to lift that needle up and we're going to crank around. And this is decreasing. Lifting one. Lifting one. We're going to decrease whatever kind of toe we want, rounded, angled, whatever, to your, to your target marks. We're going to put our weights in so we're not hand tensioning it the whole time. I mean, you can. People do that. Whatever works for you. This is all about learning and a process. This one needs to be lifted. Lift to decrease, knit around. Lift to decrease, knit around. Lift, lift, lift one, lift one, lift. I'm going to adjust my weights to get the right downward pressure. Lifting one to decrease, lift one. This is the last one on this side. Last one on this side. All right, now we're gonna start increasing our stitches back into work again. So wherever the yarn is coming from, we're increasing by pushing one down on the opposite side. Okay, pushing down on the opposite side. Now, why would you do a toe up? Maybe you're trying to use every bit of yarn. I don't know. There's multi multitudes of reasons people could do toe-up socks. Okay? You just got to know how to finish it off. So you'll have waist yarn at the top of your sock, and you have to know how to do like a sewn bind off, or a latch hook bind off, or a crochet bind off. So just remember, you'll be closing the toe 
and you'll be finishing the top edge of the cuff of the sock okay I don't know what I'm doing yet I think I'm gonna do just a hung hem just to show you guys uh, yarns coming from this side put one down and work on the opposite side one down on the opposite side now you can't see very well, but all these stitches that was 32 of them are going to end up being Kitchenered to when we do the first round of that tube. Okay, yarns on this side. We're still increasing. Increase. We're increasing this one. Now you could take this tail and wrap it up in. Right, so you could do a little manipulation of the tail so it's woven in. Right, I don't know if you really want to do that. We're kitchenering it. Why would I have done that? I might take that out because there's no point in that actually. I forgot we're kitchenering this, so we'll be able to kind of close it up. <sighs> when we close it, oh, I didn't leave a very long tail. Let's hope that's enough. All right, so this is now at 30. Uh, We've done half on this side. We're going to put this last one down, but we're going to stop at the front. Okay? Because we're going to put all of our needles back into work. So cranking around to the front. We're going to put everything down into work. Making sure latches are open. You're not smushing them down. Now this yarn was giving me... I'm trying to think it was about 9 or 10, inch, nine or ten rows per inch. So... We're going to do about 50 rows for this sock, and then we'll do a heel. So slowly, we're going to go around in a circle. Okay, I'm going to hold these tails. Now I'm going to take my heel spring off, because I don't want my whole sock to be knit with the heel spring on. Now, you can kind of tell those stitches that we started with, row one, are going to get Kitchenered to this row. That's why I have waist yarn and a ripcord here, because I need to be able to access the live stitches without a, a bonnet hung on it. So that's why there's ripcord, okay? And two waist yarns. That might seem weird, but it's not because you need to act. You need to have a hole to access it. So let's do 50 rows. I don't know how far this yarn is going to get me. <clears throat> We might need to change yarns before we get to the heel because I don't have much yarn left. Oh, I would like to use it all though. That would suck leaving a little bit, but we're going to change at row 44. <laughs> all right. Well, this is now 45. I'm just afraid that's not enough to do a heel. So let's change yarns. I don't know what I'm going to put on, but we're going to put something on. I didn't anticipate doing this right now, but then I decided to. So <clears throat> let's find something on a cone already that'll work, that I have enough of. All right, pumpkin yarn. We use this for something else. These are going to be some funky socks, but we're just going to, we're rolling with it. All right, so threading my mast, I'm doing a faux Russian join here. So I already made my loop. I'm making the other loop. Okay, so now it's going the opposite direction, the loop. Cranking forward, catching all that. And we're going to go to the 50, like I said. All right, so now we're going to do a heel. All right, so you can do... Deep heel. Uh, these are going to be shorty, a little bit short. They're not going to be too short. I'll do a regular, a regular heel on these. So let's just do a half, half heel again. Okay. 
lifting all your needles in the back up. Um, I like doing the one down on each side to start. I don't know if that really matters. Let's not do that. Let's just do the lift the pearl stitch from the back. Cranking to the back, putting your heel spring on. Okay, now we're gonna do our heel. Lifting one to decrease. Lift one. Lift one. Lift one. This yarn needs a little bit more tension on it. Lift one. I feel like it's going to be a very open sock because this tension on this yarn is different from the yarn I was cranking first. All right. Remember, not all fingering weight yarns, sock weight yarns, are the same. <laughs> They're definitely different. So um, you should do swatches, which is just cranking a few rows, measuring, seeing how many rows you get to the inch. That kind of helps you um, gauge how many inches to knit based on how many rows are in that inch. Lift one to decrease. Lift one. Lift one. Lift one. For the top of the leg, I think I'm gonna keep the heel spring on though. Lift one. Lift one, we're almost at our targets. Lifting this last one. Lifting this one and down two. So we'll just do the well, we don't have to do the one up down two. We'll, we'll do a regular increase, which is across. So the yarn is coming from this side. You're decreasing one or increasing one on the opposite side by putting that needle back down into work. Okay. Yarns on this side, one needle down on the opposite. Opposite side. Opposite side. Oops, my ring got caught. One down, one down, adjusting weights. One down on the opposite side, opposite side. Opposite side, opposite side. Opposite, let's adjust. One down on the opposite, one down on the opposite side, one down on the opposite side, one down on the opposite side, opposite side, opposite side, opposite. All right, this is the last one down here. Let's close up that gap by lifting the purl stitch from the stitch not worked over. Now you do it on the side, you do it on the side, on that side, because you're wrapping it. That's right. <laughs> we're not uh, on the last one yet. So we're, did I lift? No. Did I decrease? Yes. Oh my gosh. We decreased. Let's keep going. Sorry. We're going to lift it first or wrap it first. Goodness. What was the order? Because you have to wrap this around the one not worked. And then if you lift it, nope, I think it's the opposite. So let's lift it up onto the needle and then it's wrapped. Okay. <laughs> we want to close up this side though too. This goes down. Sorry. Pearl stitch from below. Close it up because we're going to go in the round again. Oh yeah, yeah. That one's wrapped. Let's hope it works. Okay. Although I should have wrapped on that side. Okay. It's fine. It's fine. Now we're going to do a leg. Put everything down in to work. Goodness. <laughs> oh, 
on the fly videos. And I dropped a stitch. Okay, learning experiences. If you can, lift your weights. I'm going to take that weight off for now until I can catch that. I did not intend for that to happen. When I pushed those down, guess what? I didn't have that latch open. That is what happened. So we need to catch the stitch first. Let me use the other side. Okay, we've caught it. This is a latch hook tool. You can use one of your needles. You want to go behind the stitches. I'll, I'll go behind once I get further up, but behind the stitches and catch this, okay? So you need to go past the latch, grab your ladder, put the ladder into the hook, and you're going to latch it up. Now you're going to make sure you go this is where you should probably put your weights back on, your weight back on. It's easier when the weight is on, but you got to catch that stitch first. Okay, it's going to make everything kind of go in like that. We have that stitch caught. I should crank forward a little bit. Okay. <clears throat> Again, the latch has to be open. I have to get down further. Latch open. Grab the ladder, putting in the hook, latching it up. Normally the stitch will push open your latch, grab the ladder, pull it up. The new stitch pushes your latch open, grab your ladder, put it in your hook. Oops. Open your latch. If you don't have a latch tool that stays open, that can be a problem. Okay, this is the last one I can do until I move my latch hook tool. Okay, so what I need to do is I'm going to grab it with my because I need to go behind all of these. Okay. And then re-grab it with the latch hook. Pull the ladder out. Latch it up. Pull the ladder out. Put it. Stay open. And that is the hardest part. Is when sometimes when you get up here, it is a little easier to maybe lift your weight. When it's down further, it's better when the weight's on. When you're up here. It's easier when the weight's not on. Okay. We're just going to do all of them till we get to the last one over the latch. Okay. Now we've caught them and we've fixed our stitch. <laughs> I haven't had to do that yet on a video. Okay. Now we're going in the round. Um, I'm not even sure how many rounds I did. That was like one, because that just closed. So one, I'm gonna keep the heel spring on so the leg is tighter, because this yarn is um, a little bit looser, I noticed. And you'll be able to see that's without it, and this is gonna be with it. And you can really tell the difference in your tension. That's a big difference. All right, this is a 30 row leg right now at this tighter tension so it probably won't be much of a be a little leg but i did kind of want a shorter pair of socks so we're gonna do a two row hung hem or maybe three let's just do like three rows and we will finish um we'll put waist yarn on and then you'll finish your edge like you could stop here but this would roll 
right? This would roll once you latched, like you put waste yarn on your live stitches and then you finished your edge. However, you would have a roll top um, because the nature of stockinette stitch is it will curl. If I do like a two row hung hem, three row or whatever, um, I'll then bind all, I'll put the waste yarn on the live stitches, which will be where I hung it. And you'll have to do a sewn bind off or however you want from that. Okay. So <clears throat> let's just do like a two or three row hung hem. I stopped here so I can start here. So we're going to go like three pearl bumps under and just lift that up. It's going to be hard with this tension. Maybe I should just do a roll top. You know what? For the sake of this video, I might just stop, put some waist yarn on, and I'll just do a cute little roll top. All right? I'll not be able to show you that finished part, but you'll be able to see. So I'm going to leave a long tail so I can sew it off, sew bind, bind... <laughs> Bind it off with a sewn bind off, latch hook bind off, crochet bind off, whatever you feel like doing for your bind off. Oh, I could do, you know what? Let's make it a little fun here. Let's finish off this blue yarn and I'll just have this crazy roll top with the blue. All right, so let's do another color change. This is a long video, but we're just gonna go with it. Color change, okay. That was 30 rows. I'm gonna have to rewatch this anyway and write down what I did. All right, let's add the blue back and finish off with the blue at the top. That'll be a fun and funky sock. I'm okay with that. Just doing a Russian join again. Now this yarn cranked pretty good without, um, I better keep the tension. Let's keep the tension. I'm putting it back on, heel springs back on. Again, you can see the difference. No heel spring, heel spring. All right, I'm gonna leave a long enough tail. I'm gonna put waist yarn on. Now I could fold this over and um, knit two together with the live stitch and um, this, the first blue stitch. I could do that. Now that I actually have the blue on it, I could do an actual hung hem. Let's do that. Ugh, I'm really changing up my mind, ain't I? That's what happens when you don't practice ahead of time. I'm taking my weights off so it'll be easier to hang. I don't know exactly which one was the first, so we're just going to guesstimate here. And we're going to start hanging. We did have that double um, where we did the brush and join, so just be mindful of that. Oh, with the second color, it really helps hang a hem. I was going to try to hang a hem with the orange, like a longer hem. <laughs> but I didn't. It's it's hard without putting my ripcord in as a trick to get the exact row. I like my ripcord trick. If you haven't seen my ripcord trick, I did that in the glove fingerless glove video. I could do it again in another video. Actually, I probably will because I want to do leg warmers yet. And I haven't videoed that. So that could be, that could be really fun. Okay. We're just going to go all the way around our cylinder. We're not going to be able to go all the way to the end. I left enough tail even after I decided to do this, that it'll be enough to do. I like doing a crochet bind off. So, but you can do whatever bind off works for you but I will take this off so I can show you the open toe so now because <clears throat> you'll have to do two ends you know like if you do a regular hung hem at the top of a sock you only have to close the toe usually all right let's put our weight on trying to get past as far as you can because it was a shorter sock okay Pushing that down in. Now I'm only going to do one row to close this off. Because I need to have enough of a tail to bind it off. You can just take a darning needle and go through all the live stitches 
because you're going to put waste yarn on. Go through all your live stitches that are left and um, call it a day. It'll hold. It's not going anywhere. Go through all the live stitches, not pulling too tight with the tail on a darning needle and just weaving it in. Like if you don't leave a long enough tail and you have enough to do that, just do that. Like crochet bind offs, sewn bind offs, take a little extra stitches. Okay, last one. I want to crank back to the same point. So I'm at the, I'm there. Let's take all this off. Whoops, of our cone. <laughs> it's a lot. So this is the last one. We're going to take it. Goodness gracious, Aquila. <clears throat> put it into our tube get a good contrast waist yarn we'll crank it off after we put our waist yarn in and so you guys can see okay them so I I always stop you guys probably notice I always stop with my waist yarn to untangle it a little not quite untangle it but unball it some so it doesn't all try to go in the machine as a little ball of yarn pull that tail in let's crank it off hold your weights don't forget you don't want to break a toe or a foot okay let's look at this open toe up sock that you just have to kitchener the toe and close off your top as I drop it on the floor <laughs> okay so here's where we started we started with a setup on it waist yarn rip cord waist yarn we did that because we need to close these remember oh you can't see we need to close these so let's take this rip cord off Boy, you guys got a little bit of everything in this video, huh? With the fixing of the stitches. The dropped stitch. Let's take that off. Magic. It's my favorite. It really is. So we will close the toe. We have a toe here. We will close that like we would normally close a Kitchener toe, right? So it's the same thing. We'll have a Kitchener toe here. We have the foot, a heel, we have a small leg, and a hung hem. You will not take this off right away. Remember, you have to take your tail, close off your live stitches, or, or you will drop them all. Take your waist yarn off after that, and you'll have this toe-up sock. I mean, again, toe-up socks. What is the main reason for toe-up socks? You want to use all of the yarn, right? So maybe you have um, a small amount left, you split it in half, you go toe-up, and then maybe you have to change color like I did to use up, like, scraps. It's it's totally up to you. Like, you could do that toe-down, too. It doesn't really, you know, to use up all these scraps. So toe-up sock purposes, I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't know why, because you can pretty much do a top-down sock however you need it to be. <laughs> it's just my opinion. Okay, my opinion doesn't matter. Uh, Toe-up sock. Just having to Kitchener it, you know? Like, I just got very frustrated trying to do a toe-up sock with the weight in it. It's, yeah. I have to just keep trying. That's just my own fault that I haven't practiced enough. So, all right. Um... Happy Socktober and happy cranking, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys.